So today we're going to jump into 3D. Uh, we're going to go over some basic terms, and then I will show you how to set up the node structure for the ship, uh, put a few basic things in the world so you have some frame of reference to see the movement of your ship, and then lastly we'll go over the script on how to actually make the movement happen. Now this is very basic movement, it's pretty rigid, but in the future videos hopefully we can make that move a little bit smoother. So before we get started, I want to go over a few words, uh, starting with transform. Transform is a word kind of like velocity, how it holds both the information of the direction and the speed. Uh, transform holds both the information for the translation and the basis. Now the translation is a lot like position, so it moves to this position or to this spot. Now basis, on the other hand, is the rotation. Now translation does not care at all about the rotation, and basis has nothing to do with the position of the, of the character or object. Uh, they're separate, and, but they both feed into the word transform, which we will be using in our code and in the inspector. So it's easy to find where the transform is in a spatial node. All spatial nodes have them. You have just your transform here with the translation. And again, this will work like position in 2D. Uh, and that's pretty simple. And when you, that's pretty simple to understand. But when you get a chance, just play around with these numbers and see how it moves them around. Uh, you will have to remind yourself over and over again about which way is up, down, left, right. Um, but you can always just put in some numbers and see how it affects your mesh. Now, basis is a little bit more difficult because it's not technically in the inspector. It has rotation degrees. And the reason for this is rotation degrees. And the reason for this is rotation degrees are a lot easier for our human minds to understand. We've kind of been taught to understand rotation and circles in 360 degrees, and that's what we have with rotation degrees. And with a basis, it is normalized or reduced to be, from, instead of 0 to 360, it'll be 0 to 1. Um, now, the reason for this is it's a lot, like I said, it's a lot easier for humans to understand rotation in degrees but it's a lot easier for us to do uh, computations in code with the basis. So instead of having the, us type in all of the math to get the rotation degrees to the basis, Godot just does it all for us. We just have to type the word basis. Now I will add that later on you'll see how we'll be able to type this in code, uh, like transform.translation.x, or Y, or Z, and the same for basis. We'll have transform.basis.x, and that will become very useful later in the code. So before we can get into the script, we have to have a ship or an object to move around. So I got this ship from Kenny Gameart. I will put a link into the description. And the scene just starts with a simple uh, kinematic body, 3D, um, or just kinematic body, and we're going to add a mesh instance, and here is the file for the model from Kenny Gameart. Uh, I'm just going to use an OBJ because they're very common, simple. Um, you pull this right into the mesh instance, and when you do that, it's going to be all white, or it won't have really any color like I have right here. You will have to go into the material and add a new color for each one of them and pick out a different color. You'll be able to see how it changes. Just play around with it until you get a ship that you like. Then for the collision shape, since all kinematic bodies have to have a collision shape, the easiest way to do that would be just to click Mesh and click Tri Mesh Collision Sibling. Uh, and it'll just make it for you, and then we don't even have to worry about it for the rest of this uh, tutorial. Lastly, we have the camera rig, and I just added a spatial, renamed it camera rig, 
didn't do anything else to it except add a camera. Uh, and so I'm using the middle mouse or the roller on the mouse to rotate like this. If you click shift, you can slide it also. And that's how I'm moving around. So we're going to use this move mode to use these little arrows to just move the camera behind and above and use the rotation. We'll rotate the red one here to give it a little bit of a downward looking from above down at the ship. And you can always click preview to see if you like that. And so we can see the ship and see what's in front of it. Now, two little things that I did, uh, just so it's the same, is in the player ship, I did scale it down just so I didn't have to worry about great big meshes and that. Uh, it's not necessary. I just liked it. I just thought it was easier to work with and scaled down since the ship seemed pretty big. Um, and also in the camera, we'll have to change this far property to about 400 or something, whatever you would like. But what it's originally set at doesn't show very much since we're scooting the camera so far back behind the ship. It won't render very much of the map or of the world in front of the ship, which the world I set up uh, just a spatial node, renamed it world. I added the player, and then the ground is just a simple mesh instance. I created just a plane or a basic rectangle of a mesh, um, made its size to be a rectangle. I actually think I... Um, scaled it up also. Uh, I, either way, just practice making a great big rectangle, uh, put it in the scene, put the ship above it, and how I actually got this rainbow road effect is I just went to the material, added a new spatial material, and then in the albedo, instead of just changing the color so it's all one color, I added a texture, um, and added a new gradient, and then I added all these plot points and picked a color at each plot point, and it will uh, go and make a rainbow effect. And again, the only reason why I even bothered with the rainbow effect it was a simple, easy way to show that the air or that the ship is actually moving throughout the the world. So. Before we get into the script, let's just take a look at how the ship is moving again. It strafes from right to left, albeit pretty slowly, and it can look up and down. So we have a little bit of rotation up and down, and we just translate left and right. And so what that looks like in code, a simple speed, and then I have a function called get input. And the reason why I do this, I know that Godot has an input function built in, but it was very glitchy and not very smooth when I would use that, so I went ahead and made a function myself and put it in the physics process. Now we pass delta because that's how we're going to make a nice smooth um, turn rate and move rate, and you can change the speed. You'll be able to multiply delta by a speed variable uh, if you want things to move faster. So if we come down here to the get input, you have to go to the project settings and add some inputs. I use WASD uh, just because, and or you could use the arrow keys, whatever you want. And so I have, since it's an airplane kind of feel, I have inverted up and down. If you don't like that, you can just switch these negatives around. So if you press the up button, it will rotate the X. So if we look at the 3D uh, instance here, if you rotate X, uh, this is what happens. It'll rotate, and if you rotate it to the negative, it'll make it point down. So that's what's going on now in the script. In those first two, we just rotate it by delta. 
it will continue to rotate. There's no limit, and you can do a whole loop. Uh, so I have two different options we'll go over with the right and left. So right now, we will translate. Um, translate is a built-in function that basically just moves uh, to a different position. And I should also mention that rotate x is a built-in function. You can rotate x, you can rotate y or z. So in this translate function, we have transform.basis.x. And basically all that means is we're going to find which direction is to the right of the ship. If you put a negative in front of it, you're going to find what is the left, what is technically the left of the ship. And the reason why you do this is if the ship starts to rotate or do anything differently, then it will always find what the left side of the ship is. Uh, and that will make more sense, I suppose, when we get to the other rotates. But we just multiply this direction by speed and delta. Just so I don't forget, this line, uh, 8, uh, translate the transform basis dot z multiplied by the speed and the delta. That is how we get the continual movement forward. Uh, we will change that up and make it so we can change how fast or slow we're going uh, or which direction we're going, but for right now we're just going to have a constant slow moving forward speed. So in a lot of ways this transform basis dot x is similar to in 2D when you type in like vector2 uh, dot up or something like that. Uh, it just gives you a reference of which direction things are going. And this vector2 dot up is usually the same as uh, 0 dot negative 1 or 0 comma negative 1 is usually the same as that. Uh, j in the same vein, transform basis dot x is usually about the same as vector 3, 1, 1, 1. They're very similar. They're not exactly the same. It's better to use the transform basis dot x uh, because it might change based on how the airplane or the ship is oriented. So hopefully this will make more sense as we go along. Now, if we uh, change this from strafe to rotate, let's say you want to have a free roaming or you can fly anywhere type of game. It should just work that we can rotate the Y because remember Y here, okay, we'll turn left to right or uh, make a bigger, bigger number so you can see, see it turns left, it turns right. Like in theory, this should work. And when we play it, okay, you're going up, you're going down, you're going left, you're going right, and it looks fine, uh, but when it starts to get complicated is when you start combining these. And this is why it's so tricky to get things to work in 3D. Um, so ironically, I've taught you the wrong way to make movement, uh, but I think it's necessary to... Uh, learn this so you know why we have to go through so much extra work to get a good result. So uh, I think that's where we're going to stop today. And the next video will we'll cover on how you, to properly make 3D movement.